Inside Press Box is presented by Friedmont Mortgage. Don't make a 30-year mistake by choosing the wrong lender. Go to Friedmont.com now for all of your mortgage needs. And welcome to another edition of Inside Press Box. I'm your host, Stan the Fan Charles. Despite a recent slump, the Orioles are right in the thick of the wild card hunt going into the All-Star break. They'll be sending three players to this year's Midsummer Classic, but despite those personal accomplishments, there's a sense of uncertainty around the team. This week on the show, I'll be joined by Jerry Coleman to get his take on the O's and a myriad of other topics, including his latest broadcasting endeavors over on 1057, The Fan. But first, I know it's hot outside and nobody is feeling particularly friendly right now, especially to the BG&E men, but cheer up because in just a couple of weeks, Baltimore will witness a friendly between two of Europe's most popular teams, the Tottenham Hotspurs will play the Liverpool Football Club on July 28th at M&T Bank Stadium. More than 30,000 seats have been sold to date. Here to talk about it are Baltimore Blast President and General Manager Kevin Healy. He's also the father of Pat Healy and also friend Terry Hazeltine, Director of the Maryland Office of Sports Marketing. And gentlemen, I throw that out to you. The news about a week ago was, or maybe it was 10 days ago, over 30,000 seats. Kevin, you're the soccer real aficionado. Are we happy at 30,000 plus? I mean, it's okay. Uh, we'd like to be, have more. We'd like to have more. Obviously, we hit the Grand Slam on the, on the first event that came, that came in with the AC Milan and Chelsea. Uh, followed it up with uh, a very good number with the uh, Man City coming in against Inter Milan. We hope to get a push. I mean, this is a very good game. The soccer fans need to come out and support the game. Uh, people have shown that they'll ruin to come to Baltimore. We got to sh- continue to show that we want to support the game. So we, we got to try to get over that 40,000 mark if possible. I was talking to you guys, both of you, before we sat down to tape. And Terry, you mentioned to me that there are eight other or seven other friendly matches yes. on the same date. I thought one of the things about soccer was they like to get people from different areas to come to your area. Does that make a lot of sense to have that many of these international matches in the United States on the same date? Well, I think yeah, the, the U.S. is such a popular destination for the, the teams to come over and train and um, you know, play on U.S. soil. A lot of their sponsorship dollars that come into their clubs are from the United States, so a chance to ex- expose themselves to their, the key stakeholders um, is something they get to do in the United States. And also, too, they're trying to build a, a global audience of followers, and the United States is in the soccer world is kind of an untapped market. So them being here is makes sense, but eight of them on one day yeah, is that, a challenge. All right. Now, one of the ideas we both, or the three of us kicked around was, is there a possibility in the future that they're spending all this money, the Ravens, laying down the, uh, what do they call it, the pitch, uh, that you could do more than one game over sort of a weekend and turn it into a little bit more of an international soccer festival. Kevin? Yeah, I think it comes down to the promoters and what it's going to cost to get the teams in. You know, I think they have to be realistic at this point in time and understanding what is that game going to attract and therefore what is the revenue that's going to be produced there and then therefore what money can go back to the team. If it made sense to do that, that would be great for our city and our state because then we could get people to come in and stay for several days. So you would attract people from outside the state to come in and, and, and be involved in that type of festival and therefore stay around and use the restaurants and the hotels and the like and get people from various parts of the state also to come into the city. What's your gut feeling on that, Terry, from a from a marketing perspective? I mean, is that a tough sell or is that a creative way to turn this into something bigger? Well, I think or should we just be happy with what we have, which is, you know, 40,000, 45,000 for one game? Well, I think you have to also look at the fact that it's only in the last, you know, recent years that we've been hosting international friendlies. So we have to do a, uh, a better job of really putting Baltimore on the map, you know, as it comes to the international soccer world, um, we made great strides in our efforts to secure the, the World Cup here in the United States um, through that effort and through the petition count that we did um, trying to secure the event and then landing events like the Chelsea AC Milan and, the, and this friendly and the others. That is just building our resume so that maybe we could pitch that concept to the right promoter and to the right people and, and keep the right people in the soccer community engaged because I, th- I think it's a realistic idea. I just think we have to make sure that we have a little more maturity in our soccer product, you know, in Baltimore. Kevin, the the game a couple of years ago that drew 71,000 between AC Milan and Chelsea, 
Is that like the Yankees and the Dodgers? I mean, and, and these games are more like the Orioles and the Twins or something like no, that? I don't want to underestimate the teams we got coming in. We got two very good teams coming in. I think it was a, it, it attracted, it was a lot of excitement. I mean, Chelsea and AC Milan are two very big names. We said that at the, at, at the time, you know, we bet on it at the time, and it, and it did come through. I think you hit on the fact that there's so many games going on the same day. We did attract a lot of people from outside of our state at that point in time. But let's not underestimate the game we have. Liverpool and Tottenham this is a are top two notch very game. good teams. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Liverpool, a storied franchise, been around a while. Maybe slipped a little bit in, the, in, in this past year. Therefore, their summer training is important to them. So they want to get back to the top four. Tottenham is really making their strides. They got into the top four, kind of like we talked about Man City a couple years ago. And then Man City, there they were at the top, top of the heap this year. So Tottenham has moved up. And uh, so we got an attractive game, I think, in Baltimore. And one that we got to push and try to get the, you know, over that 40,000 mark. Any players that really should be selling this game? Yeah, uh, yeah, I mean, any anybody that for you know, if yeah. you're talking to local soccer fans, yeah, absolutely. Peter Gerard on Liverpool is, is one, him and Frankie Lampard are kind of be kind of the heart and soul, two of the heart and soul of the English national teams. And Peter Gerard is a big name. Suarez from Uruguay was big in the last World Cup. There's two big ones on the Liverpool side, and of course, they're filled with them. And then on the other side, we have the United States, Brad Friedel is, is a goalkeeper. For, for Tottenham, it has been unbelievably consistent in the EPL. He was our international goalkeeper until Tim Howard came along. He's, he's 40 years old at this point in time, so he's really kept himself in shape, possibly even 41 at this point. Uh, and then Emmanuel uh, Adebayor came over with Man City a couple years ago. He's a strong forward. So, And there, there's a host of other names out there, too. So these are two good teams that we're bringing in. All right. The price of tickets range between $36, I believe, and $125. If folks are interested, they're watching this show today and say, hey, we want to do a group or whatever. I mean, how do they get tickets? Go on the the Ravens website and then the special events and uh, their their ticket sites there, Ticketmaster. Um, there are tickets available. Obviously, our goal is always to hit the 71,000 threshold. And, you know, and we're going to aim for that, and that's always going to be our goal. And people, there are great seats available. They just need to get on, on the Ravens website and make sure that they, they purchase those tickets. Anything for groups or, or Kevin or any taverns around town doing any kind of special oh, things with this? Absolutely. There's a lot of groups that are coming in, and, and uh, you know, there'll be a Liverpool supporter area. There'll be a Tottenham supporter area. So it, it's going to be a fun game to go to and what, what's going on. And once again, we got to get this last push, get, get above, because Terry's doing a great job. We're getting calls every year about bringing games in, and we got to continue to prove that they want to come to Baltimore. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank Terry you. Hazeltine. Uh, with the state sports marketing director and, of course, Kevin Healy, general manager and um, GM, uh, uh, vice president and general manager of the Baltimore Blast. Their season coming up quickly. President. President. I kept saying vice president. You know, I'm demoting, I'm promoting, I'm all over the place. As long as I got a job, I'm happy. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Hey, thanks for coming in again. I've got a few more questions for Terry Hazeltine about sports in the state of Maryland, so don't go away. I'll be back with him right after this. Inside Press Box is presented by Friedmont Mortgage. Don't make a 30-year mistake by choosing the wrong lender. Go to Friedmont.com now for all of your mortgage needs.